Now we want to have a look in this video about scheduling a live event in Microsoft Teams. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to fire up our Teams client and then what we'll need to do is go into our calendar. Now the way that we would schedule it from here is we go to the top right hand corner and we would select the option here under new meeting and select the option here basically to uh, have a live event. Now that will take us through the steps of how to create a live event. But before we do that, let's just have a quick review as to what the differences are between a live event and a normal meeting in Teams. Okay, so there are some differences between meetings and events uh, in the Microsoft 365 environment. So typically we see the meeting being a much smaller um, process. We also see it being a smaller number of attendees and it's more ad hoc. The other interesting thing that is different about uh, meetings and events is that typically in meetings everybody is a participant. They can uh, speak, take themselves off mute and they can contribute. Events are much more about a broadcast. So basically a group of presenters broadcasting to an audience who then have limited interaction uh, back in that meeting. So there are some big differences. So think about uh, typically a a normal Teams meeting as uh, like a meeting you would have in your office with a smaller group of staff. Think of an event more like an industry event that you would attend where it is a fully blown presentation. Now what we can do with uh, the meeting side of it, it's really easy to get started. We just can broadcast directly from our webcam and we share that with a group of people typically within our organization. If you do want the studio grade the larger control over the environment and more of a broadcast mechanism, then again, we need to have a look at uh, live events, which is what we will be talking about and showing here. Now, the benefit of live events is that it basically allows us to record our events. We can broadcast that uh, anywhere. We can also share our knowledge and our expertise, and we can do that in a number uh, of different matters here. Now, the way that we can do that is we can share things like conversations. We can do ongoing broadcasts. We can, again, do lots and lots of options here to help us uh, share information across our organization. And if we go in and have a look at all the different types of events that are possible inside an organization, you'll see there are lots and lots of options here. So what we want to do is we want to align these and then work out basically what makes sense for the scale and also the structure. So the larger the scale and the more structured we want it, typically we want to move to a Microsoft uh, Live event. So if we put this in terms of structure and scale, and what we would then do is go in and have a look and we will see that there are two distinct areas in which meetings and live events fit in. So typically in the top right hand corner, we've got one to many, and down the bottom we have our ad hoc. So live events work really well for one to many where teams meetings are ad hoc uh, style. So you get some sort of general guidance here as to the size and the structure as well. So live events are much larger generally and also typically a, a broadcast or publication style event where you have somebody broadcasting to uh, an audience who does have limited interaction. Now, why do we use live events? Well, it gives us, when we produce those events, a richer UI, we've got more control, we can have multiple videos, we can have multiple presenters, uh, and we get much more control and professionalism over the way that we present. And as an attendee, we can watch it from anywhere on our mobiles, on the web, we can join anonymously, uh, we can make that available, and the way we typically interact uh, is with Q&A in a, a Q-style environment. Now, there are lots and lots of details around live events. They are part of a range of solutions and services with Microsoft 365, including Yammer, Teams, uh, SharePoint, and so on. If you want more information about this, I suggest you visit the link aka.ms slash live events to get some more details on that. Now, with that overview, let's just pop back and look at how we can actually go in and schedule our live event in Teams. Okay, so we're back here in our environment. Now, the way that we went in here to uh, basically uh, schedule this was that we uh, went into uh, Teams. All right, so we went into Teams, we went into Calendar, and then we went into the Meeting option up the top here, but we selected the drop-down and selected the Live Event. 
Now by selecting that, we'll be taken through these options here. So let's call this uh, a webinar. We can put in a location. Uh, if we want to do that, if we have meeting rooms, you'll see that um, I'm, as an organizer, already uh, been added to this. I can add additional presenters. So these people, again, have the ability to present, to show information, to show their slides, and so on. So you might want to add those people in there. Remember that they will have a presenter role in the meeting. I go in here and choose the start and the end time, and I pick my time zone, you'll see that I can also put uh, more information uh, down here that would then be sent available uh, to people. So once I've completed that, I want to go to next. Now next is where I'm going to really control the options here. So the first options up the top, it determines who uh, is going to have permissions in here. So I can tie this to certain people and groups. If I want to keep this inside my organization uh, and target a specific group of people, I can do that. If I just want to make it across my organization, so they need to log into my um, Microsoft 365 tenant, that means that anybody inside my tenant can, sh can view it, uh, but they cannot share the link or nobody from outside the organization uh, can come and attend uh, this live event. Typically what most people want to do when they're sharing uh, externally is select the option here for public. So what this means is you can share with basically anyone via a common link, which is the option that we'll select here. And you'll also see that this can be done uh, anonymously as well. Now, the next group of selections here are very important as to how you will produce your event. So you typically want to make sure that you select the option for recording. So that will mean a recording is available after the event. You can also choose whether that recording will be available to attendees. So the first one is for producers and presenters. So they can go back and review it after the fact or maybe download it, post it somewhere else. The second option here is that if attendees are available to uh, basically come back after the event, so let's say that they missed the event and they want to view what has taken place, they can use that same link and they can view a recording, so you've got control over that. You can also put in the captions here, so it's going to take your native language, but you'll see that you can actually translate this on the fly into uh, quite a number of different languages there if you want, so you can select up to six of those. An attendee engagement report just gives you an indication of how much attention attendees are paying to your presentation. And the final one here, which is generally unchecked by uh, default, is the Q&A option. So I would suggest that you want to select that so that you'll have a Q&A box that people can interact with. Now remember that in live events, the attendees will typically only be able to interact through this Q&A environment. They're not going to be able to come off mute uh, and ask questions and interact that way. So their interaction is largely limited to Q&A and you can turn that on and off uh, if you want. And again, down the bottom, the last option here is we can select if we want to give a support URL uh, for those uh, people to go and view. Now with all that completed, let me push the schedule button. This will schedule my event and it will give me a, a number of URLs here. Now the one up the top here is my attendee link. Okay, so this is going to be what I'm going to send out to people who are going to attend the meeting. Okay, so that means that they will click on that link, they will go into an environment and they will then be able to view and ask questions. So I've copied that link there. What I'll do is I'll just show you, even though the event uh, hasn't started as yet, I'll give you an idea of what, uh, what that experience uh, basically is like. So let's open uh, a new tab here and let's go in and post that in and have a look uh, basically as an attendee. You'll see here that I have the option to open it in Teams. If I do have Teams, if I cancel that, you'll see that I have the ability to download the, the app or I can watch it on the web uh, instead. So in this case, I'm just gonna select to uh, watch it on the web. Okay, so this will then uh, launch into that environment. I'm already logged into it. You'll see here that I have the event that is going to denote that it is a live event. I can sign in, so I can actually put in credentials and log in, identify myself, or you'll see the option down the bottom here to uh, basically join anonymously. And there is also the option down the bottom to download um, the Teams desktop app if I want to get a better experience. So let me go in and join anonymously here, and you'll see that the event hasn't started yet and I have the Q&A over here uh, on the right. So I can go in here, I can ask a question, and this will appear on the uh, presenters area when the actual meeting starts. So now 
once I've scheduled this, you'll see that I can uh, join the webinar as a presenter. That will give me that control. We'll cover that in an upcoming uh, presentation. I can cancel the meeting if I want. And when the live meeting is finished, a list of resources will be here. So for example, uh, things like the video that can be downloaded. And remember that down the bottom here, these, this event, uh, this URL here is going to be for our presenters, right? So there is a difference in the URL between an attendee link, which I showed you, and a presenter link. So make sure you don't mix up the two. We only want to give our um, presenter link to the people who are presenting because they will have uh, basically more control of that. So now we close, we'll see that our webinar is scheduled and ready to go. If I do need to edit it, I can simply select it, go back in and I can make any updates that I need to do. So it's quick and easy to schedule a live event using Microsoft Teams. First thing I do is I go into my calendar, I will go up to the top right and select the option for the drop down and select a live event. I would then go in and complete the details, invite presenters, put all the information in and then select the other options that I have shown you around whether you want to uh, have the recording kept and so on. You will receive two links uh, after the end of that process, one for attendees and one for presenters. So make sure you send the right link to the right individual. So with that, hopefully that's given you a good idea of how to schedule a live event using Microsoft Teams. Thank you very much for watching the video.